Peterson. Field Guide to Medicinal Plants and Herbs of Eastern and Central North America, 3rd edition. Stephen Foster, Dr. James A. Duke. Um, I recommend this. Field Guide, uh, pretty much for any person that's want to be adamant and serious about foraging and wildcrafting. Especially through, uh, well, the eastern and central North America area, like myself. I'm in the Ozarks. And uh, as you can see right here in my collection, and I've got some uh, Echinacea tea. I have the purple cone flower, which is known as Echinacea pur puria. See, here's the pictures. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get someplace better. And uh, you see I have the white strand in here as well. And then here is the, which is called the, let's go over that one more time, Pallidia. And then you have the in-between one. Kind of looks like a cross between the big bad purple people eater and the, uh, the pale narrow leaf. We have a narrow leaved purple cone flower, which is Echinacea angustifolia. And as you can tell, the field guide is pretty much right on a spot with the uh, images. The information in it is pretty accurate. I did some uh, cross-referencing and research of what they had listed in here. And I've known this off and on about this group of flowers my whole life because I, this isn't my first rodeo as far as using these, these plants. But I don't know all the specifics you know, different scientific names. Where I'm from, we just call it the cone flower, the purple cone flower. And uh, I know that was used in antidepressant and certain kinds of medications. But uh, as far as using this field guide, I want to let you know is that the photos are pretty accurate. Uh, the information's pretty accurate. It's color coded, it's laid out very easy. Of course, it's got indexes and things like that. Uh, publishing and literature has come a long way, especially in the botanical community, which has always pretty much been really interesting to me, especially when they used to do hand drawings. But when you're trying to do positive identification, hand drawings can be somewhat misleading. That's pretty accurate. But there are some applications of how to prepare it and how to use the plants. I think that's lacking. But it does say how people do use it, but it just doesn't say how to prepare it. So what I'm doing is what I'm sharing with you a couple ways of how we do the preparations. You can dry them out, crush them up in a pestle, and make powdered form out of them and make it into a drink. I prefer to brews the plant material and I make tea different kinds of tea I put different kinds of plant material to get different kinds of flavors some plants are not complementary to each other uh, this is my container that I choose to use in a wilderness situation this is my go-to container this is called a mason jar as you can tell uh, it's got levels on the side show you how much is in it it's made by this one's made by Ball. There's another brand called Kerr, and I've been around these my whole life. It's never been a time or a place I have ever been where I never seen one of these. So these are pretty uh, consistent, widely used, and well known. So once the plant material has time to steep, I don't boil my uh, food because I believe that that damages and uh, robs the uh, nutritional value of what we're trying to achieve. And it does look pretty. I mean, you know, look at artistic. Wow, that looks like something you would see on the cover of a book of some sort. Man, you should smell these. I mean, that, that would actually make you feel better just by smelling the flowers. 
aromatherapy. I mean, bam, right off the bat, I feel better just by smelling something that, that's beautiful. Even though it doesn't look beautiful, got it got kind of bruised. But, uh, it's colorful, smells good. It's not bad tasting it. I drink it in teas. I chew on the leaves throughout the day, especially during the heat. We did cover the aspects of that this does help you fight off skin degradation, you know, from damage from exposure to sunlight, you know, prolonged, prolonged exposure to sunlight, especially uh, high heat areas, so it, your skin doesn't degrade. That means it's, you know, something you could use when it's heat resistant. It grows during the summertime, and that's what we need to look for is plants that are... Uh, that grow during high heat uh, eras, you know, times, high heat seasons that are still in bloom, still somewhat functional and green, that can help us to overcome, you know, extreme heat, dehydration, insects, diseases, things like that. We need nutrition, but I don't like eating a lot. I don't like feeling like I've ate, you know, heavy. I don't like feeling heavy and lazy. So this is what, this is how I do it. I get all my nutritional needs met. I get all my immune, immunity types, you know, ingredients out of this. I get my antioxidants. I get my uh, nitrogen, chlorophyll, and I get hydrated. I'm purifying and sanitizing the water in case it's something in it. Because municipal water in itself has just got a lot of chlorine and iodine in it. And by adding plant materials to the water, you give yourself an electrolyte solution. And, and, and that'll keep you from getting dehydrated. It'll level you out, you know, if you're prone to diabetes, scurvy, things like that. So uh, that's pretty much why I'm adding this. And uh, trying to put this as professional And as serious as possible, I know I goof around a lot, but your health is something serious. Um, nutrition, I see a lot of people who just, they don't think twice about what they stick in their mouth. <laughs> they don't care about what they eat, they're just hungry. And then after they eat, they might think about it and they feel guilty. And then, But this will straighten you out, okay? So that's why I'm posting this, you know, and putting this up as a, uh, a public video playlist, just a public video, to uh, give some other folks out there who might not have the opportunity to get the information and the resources and have access to somebody that can will, will personally help them. If you need any help doing this, if you want me to show you around a little bit and help you identify some of the plants and how to process it, and, you know, and maybe even diagnose a couple of problems you might be having if you're similar to me. You know, if we have the same similar genetic backgrounds, we have the same somewhat similar lifestyles, and you feel ill your whole life and, or off and on, you know, you don't feel good. You've had problems with energy, uh, dehydration, weakness, certain things that have been wrong with you. You can't handle high heat, you sweat a lot, things like that. This will, this will knock it out the box. Uh, this, this should at least try to get you on the right track. This will, you know... This is what I've been using as my, my secret weapon for off and on for the last 10 years now. This will straighten you out if you have problems with the uh, abusing of alcohol products. Uh, I know a lot of people, they, they feel you know tired, stressed out. If you're stressed, this will give you the power to overcome it. You know, it'll give you the fortitude physically. And then you can actually, you know, function normally and it, it's not a big deal anymore it gives you the ability to be mature but uh like i said this is pretty much what i got going on and uh, this is the presentation